what is the meaning of life? Ah, the ultimate philosophical question. It's been asked in many different ways and has been answered in many different ways. And yet, lots of people ignore these answers and ask this question again and try to find the answer that would satisfy them personally. And actually it is not surprising, since given answers to this question are vastly different from each other and are based on nothing else but opinions. And the thing with opinions is that if something is true for one person, it does not necessarily mean that it is true for another person. There can be lots of opposing but equally valid opinions. So what's up with the meaning of life? Is it really a matter of opinion? Or can we ground it in something? If we look at the question itself, what is the meaning of life? We might notice that it is kind of a vague question. What do we really mean by meaning? About whose life are we talking? Mine, yours, humanity's, or life in general? And are we looking for some universal meaning? Or everybody has their own personal meaning? We can discuss it forever and might never come up with a definition that would satisfy everybody. So let's not do that and look at this from a slightly different perspective. If you are a kind of person who has nothing better to do with your life but go around asking people about the meaning of life and reading a bunch of philosophical crap about it, well, first of all, you might become an annoying YouTuber that nobody knows about. But you might also notice a pattern there. The only people who ask this question and the only time they ask this question is when they are faced with a feeling of meaninglessness. And people who try to answer this question, no matter how philosophical or how down-to-earth they are, they always talk about actions and situations that alleviate that feeling. And since different people have different life experiences, they come up with different answers. Some people find meaning in their faith in God. Some people find meaning in seeking pleasure and avoiding pain. Some others find meaning in accepting things the way they are, or attaining knowledge, or through impartial love towards everybody and everything. And the list goes on and on depending on who you ask. People who don't find a consistent way of alleviating meaninglessness claim that there is no meaning, or that anything can be meaningful if you choose to believe so. Or my favorite, life sucks, enjoy it. Probably that's why I like Rick and Morty so much. Nobody exists on purpose, nobody belongs anywhere, everybody's gonna die. Come watch TV! But anyway, these are personal opinions. And when I try to find answers to something, I like to hear facts first and opinions later. For example, if I wanted to find an answer to a question, what alleviates hunger? A biological answer that humans evolved to eat certain things that we call food and we alleviate hunger by eating these things would seem more important to me than personal opinions about who likes to alleviate their hunger by eating pizza or steak or vegan salad. And discussions about what kinds of food should we eat and whether it is possible to alleviate hunger without eating food should come later after accepting the fact that humans evolved to alleviate hunger by eating food. So let's do the same with the question, what alleviates meaninglessness? And look at our biology. Humans evolved long before technological revolution or even before agricultural revolution. So even though we've managed to build a global society and surround us with technology, biologically we are still hunter-gatherers. So biological answer to our question should lie in the times of hunting and gathering. And in such times it was almost impossible to survive alone, so it was very meaningful to belong to a tribe. And even if someone managed to survive alone, they had no possibilities to procreate, so their genes died when they did. And belonging to a tribe was not a simple matter of choice. In order for someone to stay in their tribe, they had to be appreciated by that tribe and taken care by them. And simply belonging to a tribe was not enough either. People had to work for that tribe, otherwise the whole tribe would have gone extinct. So the people most likely to spread their genes were the ones who saw the meaning in belonging to a tribe, working for that tribe, and being appreciated by that tribe. If my hypothesis is right, if our biologically programmed meaning of life really is to belong to a tribe, work for that tribe, and be appreciated by that tribe, then most common reasons for feeling meaninglessness and being depressed would be the feeling that you don't belong, the feeling that you're unable to help your tribe in any meaningful way, or the feeling that your tribe does not appreciate your contributions and is not willing to help you in return. I do not have enough resources to make a conclusive statistical research to find out if this hypothesis is right, but every piece of information that reaches me suggests that it is. There are lots of suicidal teenagers who do not see the reason to continue living because they are being rejected by every peer group, and even more teenagers who force themselves to do the things they hate just to fit in. There are lots of men who feel depressed because they are unable to provide their families with everything they need and deserve. Lots of women face meaninglessness because people do not acknowledge all the hard work they do at home. 
old people who can no longer be useful to the society and are therefore gradually excluded from it, workers who cannot see the connection between the work they do and any positive influence on the world, ethnic minorities who are excluded by default, and lots and lots of other people who ask themselves, what's the fucking point? Why do I even bother? And they ask these questions precisely for the mentioned reasons. And even if we look at the people who seem to have their lives figured out, we might notice that they are mostly preoccupied by the same goals. They strive to ensure their place in their chosen community, they try to protect, help and expand that community, and they try to draw attention to the good work they've done. And it doesn't really matter which group of people you choose to view as your tribe. It can be your family, your country, your company, YouTube community, political party, religious group, ethnic group, or a group of people that like the same type of movies. As long as you feel that you really belong there, that your contribution to that group is significant, and that group values your contribution, you won't feel meaningless, even if your work is really hard and results are relatively tiny. But if the solution is that simple, why are there so many unsatisfied people questioning the meaning of life? Well, the answer to that is quite simple as well. It is really difficult to find all the ingredients in one place. For example, if you don't see the connection between the work you do and how it benefits your community, or even worse, you fear that your actions might harm your community in the long run, you're not going to see the meaning in what you do, even if your salary is pretty good. Especially if you have to leave your community five days a week and work for some other group of people that does not belong to your community. Of course you can see yourself as a member of your country or even the whole world and feel that we all are one global tribe. In that case you don't have to leave your community when you go to work, but then you might notice that people who get most of the fame and rewards aren't the ones who contribute to the society the most. In other words, you have to choose either to work for the society or try to become rich and famous. And even if you succeed in doing both, it is very likely that you won't feel any connection between your input to the society and your fame. Thus, you will feel that at least one of those things is meaningless. So even though the recipe for meaningful life is quite simple, it is nonetheless quite difficult to acquire all the ingredients. And yeah, I understand that looking from a philosophical perspective, this hypothesis about the meaning of life is as much of a bullshit as any other claim about the meaning of life. But if our goal is to alleviate the feeling of meaninglessness, I believe that this is a great starting point. So until we crack the code of universe and discover that our true purpose in life is to generate the ultimate question about life, universe and everything, or feed the mosquitoes or whatever, we should stick to the answer that is biologically coded in us and try to make a community where everybody can feel a part of it, have the ability to contribute to it and are appreciated for their contributions. So yeah, leave a comment below and tell me how useless are all the things I do and therefore I should lock myself in the basement and stop bothering anyone.